time that I really had a desire to help feed someone. I was in middle school and I saw an ad for a doe-eyed child in one of the Time magazines, probably from Latin America, who needed help for food and uh, education. And I thought I could support this child with my babysitting money. But my parents weren't so sure I could follow through with that commitment, so they didn't let me sign up. In my 20s and 30s, our family lived in uh, southeast Alaska. And across the street, uh, an elderly woman lived, and she had raised her children in the house that we presently lived in. And I noticed that she would sit at her kitchen table morning and night, hardly eating anything, smoking a few cigarettes. And I thought, this woman needs some food. And so I decided we'd start taking her dinner. So either uh, my daughter Leah or myself would walk a plate of food over to her house each evening. It was so simple and really appreciated. After my children were grown, um, I, uh, I became a hospice volunteer, and my mother had passed away. I saw the power of uh, hospice, and um, I thought that would be a, a route for me to satisfy my need to um, help nourish people in different ways. And it worked for a while, but I found I really hungered for more uh, involvement in my community. So um, during that time, uh, while I was a hospice volunteer, oops, here we go, uh, a friend of my son's, Molly Lehman, was diagnosed with stage four Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, I knew her a little bit and decided um, that I would call her to see what I could do to help. Uh, I offered to help, uh, make food, which always seemed so useful and needed. And she immediately took me up on it, even telling me what she liked to eat <laughs> on that first phone conversation. And I um, became a major support person for Molly. Uh, Molly, I made food for her, which met her nutritional needs and her preferences and developed a, a great friendship with her. Molly made what is considered by her doctor to be a phenomenally fast and total recovery, even going on to have three adorable children, oh, and the oldest, uh, oldest one in that picture. Um, during this time, um, I, what I really noticed was that the love and commitment that goes into caring for someone has tremendous healing powers for both uh, the giver and the receiver. I benefited by this incredible relationship that developed with Molly and Molly was nourished by myself and many other community members. Um, she's a testament to positive thinking, Western medicine, and the willingness to receive what's given. Um, my, attention to, um, to, my attention to helping others shifted about seven years ago, and I'm not great on the dates, but um, I volunteered for uh, one of Peggy Taylor's Power of Hope projects. And in that, during that session, I found out there were 63 known homeless children on just the south end of the island at that time. This startled me, and with a small group of friends, we set about to make food for these children we didn't have faces for. Um, it wasn't long before there were more people getting involved once the word of our mission spread. And it, in a way, it didn't surprise me because there's nothing so um, heart-wrenching as thinking about children not having what they need. Um, the statistics on the screen show how many known homeless children there still are on South Whidbey, and this is only if it's reported, so it's always, um, they think it's probably low. Uh, it also shows the statistics for the children that get free or reduced lunches in the school system. So this this program became with the Island Nourishes, or WIM, and as it's commonly known. And we now make approximately 1,400 lunches a month for, for children, both homeless and ones that are in need. It, that statistic also shows how many uh, kids the Hood Cheer serves uh, in their percentage from 2011. There's 23, 28% of their uh, population are um, children. Um, the WIN volunteers are an incredible group of people, and I think that they're all folks just like myself who see that we feel much better if we are 
or they're the, they're the people that feel good, know how good they feel when they're helping others. And as my friend and cohort, Dorit Zingarelli says, it's soul food that we're making. <laughs>